started in Hale Junior School, uh, 1965. Mrs. Berry, um, a Fever Thrower, so her headmistress, came back, uh, stood up in assembly one morning <coughs> with an ostrich's egg and a pair of Argentinian hunting balls and said she'd been to Patagonia for a summer holiday and that there were well speaking cowboys out there. And um, Dorian Britton was the best liar in our class. And he said he had an uncle Reese who was a gaucho in Patagonia and he was going to stay with him in Corrid and Rise in Rubina. And <laughs> his father had built a wooden stand in the front garden of the semi detached on which Uncle Reese could tie his horse. Uh, Hugh Evans corroborated this and we stood for a week at the school gate waiting for Uncle Reese to turn up on his horse. Of course, he never came. Um, and they taught me uh, at a very early age that Patagonia is part history, part myth. Um, and from that point on, really, the, the idea of this amazing place where we have got Welsh speakers living in Argentina kind of has implanted itself as has to many Welsh speakers, I know. Uh, and it, I think um, when Rebecca Gilbertson, the producer, said, Why do we make a film in Patagonia? it was my turn to go, I think. I think as an artist, you obsess. I think everybody. Here can say, you know, once you fall in love, you asphyxiate. I remember being in a in a cab, and um, Anthony and the Johnsons hope there's someone came on the radio, and it was this idea of hope there's someone who can take care of me when I die. Will I go? And I thought, wow, that's so intense, you know. And this whole film was about that, you know, death, <coughs> life, uh, life path. You know, uh, what's going to, it kind of, when it closes, you still really don't know what's going to happen to any of the characters, really. And so that song just seems absolutely perfect. Yeah.